everyone. Welcome to Paul Painting with Ron. I hope you've been really well since the last time we saw each other. Well, as you can see, I'm in my garage again today because I'm going to get messy with paint again. If you've been following my videos, you'll know that last time we did something a little different. I was in my kitchen um, demonstrating the easy peasy method that I use for varnishing paintings. Well, if you missed that one, I'll put a link to that one at the end of this video so you can catch up. So, what are we going to be doing today? Well, I had a customer browsing my Etsy store the other day who spotted a painting that she really liked. Um, it was a Dutch poor painting, and she was wondering if I could do two for her that would more or less match. Now, um, I thought the easiest would be, rather than trying to match the one that I did earlier, that I would just do two at once. So I'll be doing two paintings at the same time today and that way they, they should look more or less the, the same as each other. Now Dutch pours, I must admit I find a, a little tricky. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. So fingers crossed that it works today because I'm doing two. But anyway, the colours that I'm going to be using today in my Dutch pour are all Amsterdam colours. I find they're nice and bright and they work really well. Especially for a Dutch pour because the mix needs to be really thin. And I thin it with, with water and the Amsterdam paints, they, they hold together really well. So my, my background colour, my base coat is going to be their um, titanium white. And then the colours I'm putting on top are all variations of blue. I'm using turquoise green and what's this one? Uh, primary cyan, some turquoise blue and some cobalt blue. And then added to that, I'm using some of this lovely Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold. All of those colours, they do look really nice together. Now, uh, some people when they do a Dutch pour, they just thin these Amsterdam paints out with water. Um, I, I cheat a little bit. I like to make the colour go a little bit further than it usually does. So I'm mixing the paints today one to one with Floetrol. Floetrol may create some extra lacing effects. So one to one with Floetrol. And then I'll add water until the consistency is thin enough for a Dutch pour. And I'll show you what that is in a, in a little bit. So for each painting, I used about 120 grams of white and about 20 grams of all the other colors. And I added the um, same amount of Floetrol. And I can't really say how much water I added. I just kept adding little bits until the consistency was right. Um, so I'll show you that in a second. Consistency for this technique is the key. If it's too thick, you're not going to be able to blow it out with your blow dryer. All right, let's get started. Okay, here we are, we're organized. I've got both canvases next to each other. Um, I can't show you both of them, but yeah, they'll, I'll do the same thing to both. At the end, I'll show you how this other one on this side turned out, but I'll do them both at the same time. Now I'm using today this 30 centimeter by 60 centimeter thin edged canvas and like I usually do I prepare the back with some painters tape and some giant push pins that I got from my local stationery store and then I've made sure the canvas is level. It's really important that your canvases are level otherwise your design while it's drying will move. You don't want your design to move. All right, so my, my table is level. And then I've got one of these little levelers here that I just put around the sides to make sure everything is right. Now, if the table is level, I normally don't need to do anything to the canvases. They're always level. But if they're a little bit off, I can just pull these push pins in and out a little bit to get the, the level exactly right. Now also a tip for when buying canvases, sometimes they're a little bit warped. Um, so I always lay them on the floor in the art shop. If they lay flat and don't wobble around, then they're fine. 
uh, to use. I don't buy the ones that wobble around. You'll never get them level for your painting. But anyway, my colours today, don't know if you can see, but they're, they're really thin. If I dribble the paint off the stick, so if it runs off in a stream and it, or if it leaves a mound, it's only a teeny weeny little mound. And if I do a little twirly shape, I don't get a bump on the top. So it's not water thin, but almost. It's really quite, quite thin. So you do need a good quality paint, especially if you're using water to, to thin it out. A poor quality paint, you really can't add much water to it before things start getting funky with it and it starts separating and do, doing interesting things. So I found Amsterdam works really well. The white I've kept more or less at the, the same consistency as well. All right, so the first step for my Dutch pour today is to cover the surface of my canvas in a thin layer of white. Now, I don't want it to be really thick because it then has nowhere to go when you blow it out with a blow dryer. Right, so I just spread it out over the canvas like so. I'll just keep a little bit in case there's an accident. And then I'll just spread it a bit with my palette knife. As you can see, it's really thin, but not, not water thin. Like so. Now, some people will blow it out with a blow dryer. I like to tilt mine. I'll just move it around to level it and then I'll tip some off because I've got too much. So I said I don't want a thick layer. So I tilt it off and I'll make sure my edges are covered as well. I'll just go down to this end. Back down to this end. And then do the corner. Just even out the paint again. Okay. And then I'll go around and make sure I've covered everything. If you can just pick up the paint with a finger off the puppy pad. And just dab it around making sure you've covered everything. How are we going there? Oh. Not quite covered. I'll get a spoon. I think we're good. More or less. tricky to see if the white covers everything because the canvas is white. But I think I'm good. I'll scrape the bottom edges once my painting is done. 
Okay, now I'll just do the other one, but I'll cut that bit out of the video later because you don't really need to see me doing it twice. So I've got another cup of paint here, same amount, and I'll do the other one. So that's my two canvases done. Um, you only need a, a thin layer, as you could see, and it was nice and um, a thin consistency. It spreads out nicely. I've also washed my gloves because they were just really gross. Now, before I put the colour on, I'll just torch the surface to get rid of some air bubbles. Not really a big issue when your paint is so thin. like so. Now time for the colours. Now don't get carried away with the colours. If you put too much on there you won't have any, you'll have to blow it too much to spread them thin enough. Okay now which colours will I use first? Maybe I'll start off with a dark one and then I'll do a light one and then a dark one again and then a light one and then finish off with the gold. All right. Now, let's see. I'll start. I'm not going to go right to the very edge. Like so. And I'll do a similar one here. Right, I knew I'd have lots of colour left over. But I can always save extra colour and do another one. Like so. And again, on the other one, just a, a random squiggle. Random squiggle of paint that will hopefully look nice when I blow it out with the blow dryer. Okay, and then I'll do some of the gold. Hopefully that is enough colour. We'll soon find out anyway. All right, now the blow dry that I use, I'll just get it. It's just a cheap one I bought from Kmart. It's a VS Sassoon Pro Dry 2 300. It's got one of these little um, intensifiers or things on there. It has a, a cool button and different fan settings. So I'm going to use the cool button and on the lowest fan setting and I keep it fairly upright. Mm. 
and see, it hasn't really moved, so I'll do it a bit harder. Cut the paint I threw on the floor. Oh. Right, now you don't want to over, over blow it because that the colours just get all muddy. Right, but I'm getting some nice lacing effects because of the flow troll that I used and that metallics to some degree. Now I'll just do the other one. Now, if you don't want as much lacing, don't use flow troll, just use paint and water. Okay, now just look at the composition. Now, if you want to change how it looks a bit, you can blow with your mouth or with a straw just to tidy up, tidy up your edges a little bit. So let me let me see. Don't pass out while you do this. It's looking cool. I find if you use too much white, you get like big mounds of white and your colors pool together and it doesn't look nice. So I take no, I won't take that over the edge. I think that looks nice. Okay, and then I'll just do this one. Not that this one needs a lot. Sometimes I overdo it and then I just mess it up. No, but that's good. Now I'll just get my blowtorch and torch it just a little bit. So we don't want to burn it.
Let's see how it looks. balance it was a bit too much paint down here and not enough up there that's better cool now your last step is to go around the edges and scrape off any drips now because my paint was too thin yeah you don't get many drips happening if you were using a thicker consistency of paint the scraping becomes more important because the drips look horrible when they dry and um, they tend to pull paint off your canvas as well but this is really thin so you don't have to do terribly much here just get some of the the excess off I think I'll give myself enough space there just do this one you may need to go around a second time. Just checking I've got everything covered. I do. It all goes flat when it dries. So don't worry if your painting's a bit bumpy. It tends to flatten out as it dries. Okay, cool. I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so here's the first one. You see the flow troll gives interesting lacing effects, which is what my customer liked in a, another painting of mine that she saw. So I've recreated that effect again. So the gold just gives it just that extra dimension. Now because I did both paintings at the same time, using the same paints, in the same order, they look very similar. As you can see in this one. So they should look nice when they're dried. So what did you think? I think they turned out rather nice. They were what I was going for. Dutch pours, I would think, are one of the more difficult ones to get just right. And it's certainly a technique that I need to practice with still. So you'll still see some of my attempts in future videos, I'm sure. Um, but I think that the trick with these is to keep your paint thin. People who have shared failed pores before have all tended to have very thick paints that they weren't able to blow really well with the blow dryer. So make sure you have just enough on the canvas and that the consistency is thin enough to blow out properly with your blow dryer. And then you should have some success. But anyway, we've come to the end of this video. As usual, if you enjoyed what you saw today, please um, take a moment to press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please take a moment to subscribe. So I hope you have a great week ahead um, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. In the meantime, happy painting.